there's trade, there's geopolitics, there's just not great news out there. How does it impact your investment outlook? No, I, I agree. It, does, it doesn't look very good, actually. And uh, we are not very optimistic when it comes to returns this year and, and the next few years, actually. And, um, you know, if we start with, uh, with rates internationally, I do not see them coming down as fast as many other people. I think we have some underlying inflationary pressures. We've got wages now, uh, you know, wage demand really high in a lot of countries. And so that could lead to some, you know, spiraling of, of inflation going forward. So um, then you have some climate effects, which are yeah. negative um, on pricing. You have geopolitics, you have trade routes, uh, just a lot of things. It's just not a very happy cocktail. But so if you look at the trade routes and the concern, of course, in some of the straits, which means that they have to go around, could yeah. that actually impact negatively the world economy if this lasts for much longer or gets worse? Um, absolutely, because we are seeing uh, freight rates going up and we are seeing problems also with the Panama Canal. So um, some of these uh, trade routes are, you know, are being held back a bit. But so, and I know you're a long-term uh, yeah. you know, investor, but how, how do you look at the next 12, 24 months? It's hard if you're losing money to stay the course when you see the world around you changing. Yes, but we are uh, you know, a very large fund and you have to be extremely long-term in your thinking and you have to be really well diversified which is what we are. You know, we own uh, basically a, a small yeah. part of the whole world. Yeah. And uh, so we just have to be there for the long term. But do you not see the world changing? So we, we were talking about the cost of credit, the cost of money, the fact that this is changing also for structural reasons, that it's not only because of the wave of interest rates that we've seen. Yes, so uh, money is not free anymore. And I don't think it will be uh, for a long period of time. And so, of course, that has implications for, uh, you know, companies uh, which have got debt. We are seeing it in the real estate market uh, negatively. And so we are seeing it a lot of places. But probably we've seen the big, the big jump in, in cost of capital. So from here, it's probably going to, to, to normalize a bit going forward. So I know you have a great podcast, which also means that you understand the companies you're invested in maybe a little bit better than others. Like, what's always your killer question to understand whether you want to, to keep invested in some of those industries? Well, what, is, what I think is really... So we have this podcast called, called uh, In Good Company, and we interview the top leaders in the world. Yeah. Um, what I think is, is interesting is just how big a difference management can make. You know, you have two businesses which seem to be similar and exactly the same thing, and one is doing extremely well and one is just doing badly. And it's, it's coming from the top. It's about corporate culture. It's how they instill the passion and the drive in the business. It's really, really fascinating. But it's also frustrating. If you're a long-term investor and you say, actually, this is what my bet is. It's on AI. It's on this changing the way we do the economy. Then how do you choose the companies? Well, we have, um, thankfully, a lot of really, really good portfolio managers uh, in uh, Norway's Bank Investment Management. And so the, the picking of the companies that's decentralized to the portfolio managers themselves. Is, is there anything, 2023 was probably the year that we saw the world economy really being resilient. Does that change how you see the world economy going forward? Um, you know, the, what really uh, derails things is the, the things we never thought about, right? Mm -hmm. The financial crisis, um, you know, um, an earthquake, uh, the COVID, those type of situations, that's what's going to derail it. And we don't know what the, what the joker for 24 is going to be, but for sure it's going to be something that none of us have thought about. Yeah. What happens to the oil price, though? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm not a specialist in energy, uh, in the energy market. But so when you, I mean, no one is an, an expert, frankly, in the energy market, because you now have to be like a, a political, geopolitical, you know, uh, whisperer to the, the greats and the goods to try and understand what goes on next. Do you come to Davos to, tr to try and figure out what these hot spots but, you know, spots mean for investors? Like, what are money <clears throat> markets getting wrong right now? Well, we are, we are meeting um, a lot of uh, CEOs, which is really, really interesting. Yep. I love to talk uh, to the companies about how they are seeing the inflationary pressures, because sometimes um, the central banks are a bit backward looking in the, in the data. Yep. And uh, so to, to talk to them and see what they are actually seeing now, and what they expect to see over the next few, uh, few months, that's really, really interesting. And that really forms overview. Yep. When you have a bad quarter, what do you tell your stakeholders? That it's, it's in the longer term game? Again, how difficult is it to, to try and manage all the volatility? Well, so, so we are so large. So we, will be, we are uh, running the fund close to the index. And we have a fantastic mandate, which is made by the Ministry of Finance. And we have great people in the ministry. And, so, uh, and, and there is a deep understanding of how we work. And so yeah. when, when we have a bad quarter, it's typically not a surprise. 
yeah. right? Because it's because the market has been behaving badly, and so therefore it follows that we also will have a bad quarter. But but if you think that the interest rate cuts are not coming, is it because the U.S. economy is more fragile than we think? No, I just think there is more underlying inflationary pressure, you know, and I think it's going to stay there for longer. And I do think uh, the international central banks will be very, very careful mm -hmm. in cutting rates too quickly because they were too slow in putting them up. What does that mean for your returns? Oh, I think they will be lackluster, you know. I think we'll have low returns for the next few years. But there's not, you, you can't change the portfolio to try and make up for that? Or no. it's kind of like steady as you go? No, you can't, you can't really. I mean, when you, are, um, when you are the size we are, it's very, very tough to... Uh, to change. And also, you know, when you have like a, a time horizon of uh, 20, 30 years, what you want to do is to be invested and compound and basically benefit from the earnings growth in the companies. And so that's what we're doing. Is there a story you think that will come out of the world economy that we haven't really talked about yet? I know a lot has been done about AI. Is there anything else coming in terms of innovation that could make you change the way we look at the world? Well, AI is going to be a big driver for efficiency. And you know, I had uh, this kind of starting assumption that we will increase productivity in the fund by 10%. Now, then I have Sam Altman on, the, on, on our podcast and I ask him, Hi, um, Sam, what do you think? And he said, Nikolai, you're way too conservative. You should be increasing your productivity by 20%. So what do I do? I walk around in the office and say, hey guys, you know, 20% improved efficiency. Where is it coming from? And, and where is it going to come from? It I mean, is what? going to go all over the place, all over the place. It's really transformational for so many things. But so what does that mean from an investment point of view, that you actually buy the companies that are the forefront of well, AI? Well, so, so that's a very, very difficult question, because how much is now in the prices? Uh, you know, you have the dot-com boom with huge rally in the internet shares. Uh, did it happen? Yes, it did. Ten years later, right? And in the meantime, share prices went down. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw uh, if we saw a correction in the in the AI-related uh, companies. Mm -hmm. That could easily happen. Doesn't mean that AI is not real. But so does it? But what does it mean for again for stock investors, for stock pickers? It, it feels like the world is a little bit upside down. Even the correlation between well, treasuries I mean, and stocks. I mean, the, the way to make money in a stock market is to do the opposite of everybody else. Okay, <laughs> so you buy what is completely out of favor and you sell what is really hot. That is just like the way to make money in the long term. You have to be contrarian, uh, yeah. and there is, uh, you know, there is mean reversion in yeah. in the stock market. So that's the way to do it. So, so what's your most contrarian view right now? <laughs> well, you know, some of the um, some of the green transition uh, companies have done badly over the last year or so, and of course, ESG has become, you know, a bad word in parts of the parts of the world. And so, I suspect there are some interesting opportunities there now. It, does it change also? I mean, I know we're looking at U.S. elections. We're looking at over 50% of world GDP citizens going to the polls this year. How unnerving is that from, again, d just to try and understand where the economy does next? Well, um, it's a very good question, right? Um, so we'll have some big changes uh, potentially in many places. Um, what the implications are for financial markets is less, uh, is less clear. Um, because you often have two people who have very, very different views, but they may both be pretty business, pos you know, no. positive for business. So it's difficult to say what the implications are going to be. I, I can't get out of my mind like 20% more productivity. You know, my boss is going to say the same as soon of as course. I get, get of off, off here. Does that mean, how do you change then the number of employees you have? Does it change? You, I, think we're going to, I think we're going to do more with the same number of people. I think we're going to do more. More in, ter in terms of what analysis or, or well, countries you cover? More analysis, better data, you know, hopefully uh, better investments, just uh, the whole thing. Okay, what are, you, what are you most looking forward to in Davos? Uh, <laughs> I have a whole, uh, you know, I got back-to-back uh, -back meetings over the next three days. I'm really looking forward to meeting so many people. Uh, there are so many deep thinkers. And... Uh, to just to get a lot of inspiration and, and impulses, very important to be here. I mean, do you have a question you, you need answered? That you, you know, is it inflation? Is it the cost of money, or is it something else that you wish you had a crystal ball for? You know, I, I um, what, what you have to, what I always do is just to to start with an open-ended question. You know, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? So you know, I asked your boss uh, just before this interview, what's on his mind? And AI. he said productivity. AI. <laughs> there AI. you go. I knew you would, Nikolai. Thank you so much for joining us, Nikolai Tangan, there, the Norges Bank Investment Management Chief Executive Officer.